They thought it was the perfect crime until the body was found. You're listening to Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi, featuring psychotherapist and author Siobhan Scott. Karen Reed, she is going to be facing trial yet again in January, but uh, there is another lawsuit in place, a civil lawsuit from the family of John O'Keefe. They filed a, a comprehensive wrongful death suit against Karen, along with two establishments, C.F. McCarthy's and the Waterfall Bar and Grill, the bar and grill and the restaurant and every place that they drank yeah, that uh, evening leading up to the death of John O'Keefe. It alleges that Karen Reed who was in a deteriorating relationship with O'Keefe, struck and killed him with the SUV after a night of heavy drinking uh, at those bars. She had multiple alcoholic beverages in her system, despite visible intoxication, and allowed to leave the bar. That's why they're going after the bars. Uh, they're also going after her or herself for a leading or leaving rather the scene of a uh, of a hit and run, uh, causing a hypothermia, blunt force trauma to John O'Keefe. Also accusing Reed of not only causing his death through thorough, reckless behavior, but also what happened after the fact. Things that did not have to happen after the fact, uh, beyond wrongful death, emotional distress suffered by the family members, punitive damages against both Reed and the establishment involved is what they're going after for her actions of creating that false narrative to the story uh, through her reckless behavior. And of course, there's a lot of people that were involved in that narrative and a lot of chaos that took place uh, in that city. Joining me to discuss, Siobhan Scott, psychotherapist and author. What do you think of this, of uh, this civil case against uh, Karen Reed? Well, I guess it doesn't really surprise me. Um, you know, they have always believed that she's guilty and there are lower standards for a civil case. Mm -hmm. So does that mean that they may actually come to some settlement or feel at least it gives them a place to put their anger? But yeah, the whole thing is just a sad, sad tragedy. I mean, it, it truly is. And they're not asking, they, they don't have a dollar amount on this saying, here's what we think we deserve. They're asking the court to determine what the court thinks uh, is is appropriate. Um, I think that kind of lends a little more, I mean, not that there's not any credibility to this, there's tons of credibility to it, but it, it just seems to be a little bit more, you know, authentic. If you're not saying, here's what I want, court, you decide what, what you mm -hmm. think we should be getting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think they're really doing it because they're incredibly upset, incredibly hurt and angry. And this is they didn't get the criminal conviction. And so, yeah, it's not really a surprise that they're taking this route. Yeah. Uh, after the fact, obviously, we saw the upheaval in the community, people just jumping on the Karen Reed bandwagon or the other one uh, and, and really going to extremes, harassing people left and right. And a lot of that was led by a blogger. Um, but it was never like tampered down. It could have been something where, you know, Hey guys, let's not do this. You know, she could have said something as people's lives are being destroyed even further than losing a loved one. Um, that's, I think what part of this case uh, is about. It includes damages for conscious pain and suffering, fear of impending death, lost earnings, medical expenses, funeral and burial expenses, lost value of life, uh, which encompasses the loss of society, companionship, comfort, guidance, counsel, net income, services, assistance, protection, care, and advice to his next of kin. Uh, really pointing at the the circus that was created around this, that, uh, that Karen Reed, you know, encouraged. She's out there signing autographs and cheering people on, walking out of court every single day when we're talking about her boyfriend who's dead. Yeah, very bad optics with that behavior. Re reduces one's um, sense of empathy for her, definitely. Yeah, uh, it it certainly does. Uh, it, it's going to be fascinating to watch once this goes back to trial. Do you think we're going to see a different narrative uh, on any of this from the prosecution uh, or from uh, the defense? Are we still, you think we're going to keep digging into the narrative that uh, O'Keefe was killed by the uh, the friends uh, and then drug out to the street? Or, I mean, obviously it didn't work too well the first time. No, it didn't. I I have no clue. I'm really surprised at, you know, the fact that it was charged the way it was. Mm -hmm. Um, the whole thing has a, a sense of, you know, um, confusion around it. And it's just one of these really unclear ones. I don't know. I don't know what they can do with it a second time. Yeah, it'll be fascinating. I know it's January. Uh, the date still could be changed. Things could happen. Who knows? But um, uh, the civil suit could certainly um, end up very different. Um, I mean, look at O.J. Simpson uh, with that uh, found guilty on 
the civil charges uh, of murder, yeah. but uh, not on the actual criminal charges of murder. Exactly. We may see the same thing right here. It'd be fascinating. You're neck deep in a dark, twisted tale. And just as the tension peaks, bam, a commercial about some miracle diet pill breaks the spell. It's like finding a fly in your soup after the first bite. But here's the fix. True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. You get to enjoy your crime stories without the junk, ad-free episodes, extended interviews that go beyond the surface, and early access to all the gruesome details. It's like swapping out a can of cheap beer for a glass of fine whiskey. So search for True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe and keep the darkness flowing uninterrupted.